so what actually makes makes programming language a valid programming language that we actually learn right so let's just talk about it let's just talk about it so what type of languages qualify to become a programming language a language that has decision making capabilities right that based on some decisions we can do something for example this decision making capability we humans definitely do have right like if we will see that the weather is not good outside we are going to may most probably take the all the necessary steps to make make sure that we are safe right for example if it's raining we might take an umbrella right let's just take some more example let's say if we see that the exams are near then we start preparing for them right if we feel that we are a bit sick today so we take a leave we take a day off we don't go to school college to we don't go to work right so we take these kind of decisions very easily very regularly so programming languages can also take decisions right for example let's say if i ask you a question that is 100 a multiple of 10 so you can just very easily figure out that right is 100 a multiple of 10 yes 100 is a multiple of 10 you can figure that out right so logically you can do multiple things right if either you can start reciting the table of 10 and 10 tens are 100 or maybe you try to divide 100 with 10 or maybe you already remember this answer there are a lot of things that a human brain can do similar things we will try to reciprocate in a programming language so programming languages like c c plus plus javascript java all these programming languages got decision making capabilities and these decision making capabilities are given by conditional statements conditional statements okay so what are conditional statements using conditional statement we can take decisions and correspondingly change the actions we want to do right so using these conditional statements what we do is we actually evaluate a condition we actually evaluate a condition and based on that evaluation we take some decision so let me write it so using conditional statement we evaluate a condition so we evaluate a condition so we can take decisions right based on that condition whatever is the evaluation of the condition that whether the condition is true or condition is false based on that we are going to do some actions if the condition is true then we are going to do something else if the condition is not true that means condition is false maybe we can do something else for example let's say i can have some condition that let's say if today's day is either monday or wednesday or friday or saturday let's say i am going to attend a class but let's say if today's day is Tuesday, Thursday, uh, Sunday, we are not going to attend a class. Right. So we can have different type of conditions. Now, these conditions we are going to evaluate. If the condition holds true, that is the condition is valid. Then maybe we want to do something else. Otherwise, we want to do something else. Are you guys able to get this point? So what conditional statements actually help you to do is what conditional statement? Like, let's try to have a deeper understanding. So let's say you are executing some piece of code, right? We were already executing some piece of code. Or let's say we were already executing some piece of instructions. Okay. We were already executing some piece of instruction. For example, let's say we are making a T, right? So for making a T, we have some like static things to do, right? We will take a pan we will put that pan on the gas we will turn on the gas we will put some milk we will wait 
for the milk to boil right at least this part is going to be same and if you want to make a tea then also this part is going to be same if you want to make a coffee then also this part is going to be absolutely same right that let's say you put a pan on the gas you turn on the gas you put some uh, milk on the pan and wait for the milk to boil these steps are going to be common now let's say once milk is boiled we are going to take a decision we are going to take a decision that do we want to make tea do we want to make tea like we will ask a question right we will check this condition so technically this is actually a condition this is actually a condition right this is actually a condition that do we want to make a t now this condition can have two answers that yes i want to make a t or no i don't want to make a t so this can be a yes or no question true or false question that yes i want to make a t no i don't want to make a t if i want to make a t then what will i do i will i will put tea leaves i will put tea leaves if i don't want to make a tea that means i want to make a coffee then what will i do i will put coffee powder right so here we will be taking some calculated decision that what do we want to do what does this condition actually evaluates to so this is going to be a condition now this is something like in real life right but we might have some conditions in programming also now let me give you example with respect to some end products okay so now just think about it now just think about it let's say let me give you some example so let's let's take an example of disney plus hotstar okay now disney plus hotstar can actually pro, like it actually provides subscription to a lot of users right it provides subscription to a lot of users now there can be two two things the one who the person who has logged in they might have the premium subscription or they might not have the premium subscription i'm taking the sim simple case i'm not taking the case that they might have a vip condition because i'll talk about multiple conditions later or maybe let's let's take the prime video example hotstar can be a even better example later so if you take prime video amazon prime video then amazon prime video can actually help you with the fact that if the user is a prime subscription member or not if the user is a prime subscription member for example let's see, if you are able to see my phone here that i am a prime subscription member so when i will click on anything when i will click on anything i will be able to consume the content but let's say if i am not the prime consumer like uh, prime member i have not purchased the prime subscription then what it will show me it will show me the pop up to purchase the prime pr subscription because this content is behind the walls of the subscription right so this subscription can be a condition that whether the user is a prime subscription user or not if you have purchased a prime subscription that means you are a prime user then you will be able to enjoy the content but maybe you have not purchased the prime subscription then you will not be able to enjoy the content this is one very interesting example of conditional statements right now there can be more cases there can be more cases around it right let's just take some very simple example let's just take an example of paytm okay let's just take example of paytm or any upi app similar to that now let's say in your bank account you are having 200 rupees okay in your bank account you are having 200 rupees but you want to make a payment of 5000 rupees so paytm will check right or maybe the internal banking systems can check right that whether you have at least 5000 rupees in your account or not because if you don't have 5000 rupees you won't be able to pay right so whether you have at least 5000 rupees or not so this at least 5000 rupees can be a condition that whether you are having at least 5000 at least 5000 means you can have 6000 10000 1 lakh 10 lakhs anything 
but do you have at least 5000 because you want to make the payment of 5000 and if let's say the banking system says yes this user is having at least 5000 in their account so what paytm will do paytm will raise a request to deduct the amount from their account and start the transfer but if the user is not having at least 5000 rupees in their account so what paytm will do paytm will say hey user you don't have the sufficient balance please top up your balance in your bank account and then try the transaction again later so see based on condition you will be able to see two different uis if you have the money then you will see the ui where transaction is done if you don't have the money you will see the ui of error where you will see that okay we need to add some more balance in my bank account so this conditional statement this power of taking decisions is so important in software engineering that every now and then whenever you will be building a piece of code whenever you will be contributing to a piece of software this conditional this this capability of taking decisions is going to be really helpful to you the use case of conditional statements that means that means there should be some mechanism in your programming language using which we should be able to calculate conditions and based on the calculation and the evaluation we will be able to do different things so for this in javascript and in most of the other languages also it's kind of consistent most of the places we have if and else statements right so we have if and else statements using which we can take decisions now if and else are keywords right so using these keywords you will be able to write conditional statements and you will be able to make some decisions so how do you write it like what's the syntax so first of all let's talk about the syntax okay like how do you actually code it so what you are going to do you are going to write if if then you open a pair of parentheses right you have to open a pair of parentheses and you write a condition and you write a condition okay and then you are going to open a pair of curly brace like this you can open a pair of curly brace like this okay wherever you open a pair of curly brace wherever you open up curly brace it is called as a block so wherever you have a pair of curly brace this is called as block okay pair of curly braces create a block right so you can say wherever you have a pair of curly brace it creates a block so technically you have an if block now because this curly brace actually belongs to if right so what will happen you will write if you will put a pair of parentheses inside the parentheses you will write condition now we have we know how to write conditional statements right for example a greater than 10 6 less than 5 2 double equals to 2 right we know how to write different conditions right we can use relational operators and equality operators and our logical operators are different things we can use to write different conditions right now if the condition is true if this condition evaluates to true then whatever piece of code you have written inside the if block that will be executed so let me write about it if this condition holds true then this region will be executed right that is if this condition is true then this region will be executed now you might be having some piece of code above it some piece of code below it right for example you have some console.logs here then you have this if block and then some console.log so this if block this if blocks these statements will only be executed if this condition holds true if this condition doesn't hold true this block will not be executed let me show you an example let me show you an example okay 
So let's do one thing. Okay. So let's try to see this uh, execution. So let's say we have some piece of code here. Let's say console.log. I write start. Okay. Then I write if. And then I can write some condition. So condition I can write, let's say is if 10 is greater than 5 i'm just writing some random condition for the time being now when you will be building softwares you will be writing sensible conditions right and then we say console.log yes and then we write console.log end okay this is the piece of code i've saved the file and if i run this piece of code you can see what is the output start so line number one got executed. Then in line number two, you came and you checked the condition and you checked the condition that whether 10 is greater than five or not. Is 10 greater than five? Yes. So this condition is true. So 10 is greater than five. This will evaluate to true. So whatever you write inside this parenthesis, JavaScript will try to convert it into some Boolean value, true or false. It should evaluate to something like true or false, right? So is 10 greater than 5? This is a this is the use case of a relational operator. Relational operator to directly gives you a true or false value. So is 10 greater than 5? Yes. 10 is greater than 5. So you print yes. And then there is nothing left else in this in this if block. So see, this is an if block. So nothing else is left to be executed. You go to line number 6 and you print end. Right. So you can have more if block like this. For example, if I write if 10, right, or let's say if 12. And then I say console.log printed 12. Okay, let's try to execute this. Now you can see we are able to print 12. Now you might think, okay, 12 is to no true or false, then what is happening? But you remember, right? We can, like JavaScript will here do type interconversion. And 12 is a true the value because the only numbers that are false here are 0, minus 0, and NAN. Apart from that, everything is true the. So 12 is a true the value that means it will evaluate to true and if true that means you have to execute the if block hence you print console.log print it 12 you can see this is getting printed right so this is the use case of if block right this is the use case of if block now there can be a condition right that let's say i want to go two path for example let's take this t example in this t example if this condition is true then we do something okay but let's say we already know that if this condition is not true, that means if this condition is false, then what we have to do? Maybe let's say we know that thing also. What about that? So for that you have else. For that you have else. So let's say you write if inside a pair of parentheses you put a condition. And you prepare a block. Inside this block you will be having some piece of code. Now if this condition is true. if condition evaluates to true we execute this part this block right we are going to execute the if block what if the condition is false what if the condition is false so we'll say else so you will you are going to write the keyword else right now you can write this keyword like in a new line also like this or you can write just after putting a small space you can write it here also right so both of the things are fine if you are a beginner you can even write something like this that this is the if block and this is the else block so if the condition is false then this will be executed if above condition is false this block is executed right if this condition is false then this if block will not be executed only this else block will be executed in the previous case we were not even having the else block if we don't have the else block then we can't do anything right we don't have we have not handled the case when the condition becomes false but if we if you add else block that means you have handled the condition that what will happen if the condition goes sideways if the condition goes false so if the condition goes false, whatever statements you have inside this else block, those statements are going to get executed 
and the if block will not be executed right let's see some example so if else demo dot js so we say console dot log welcome to prime video let's make a variable let is prime member equals to true okay so we say if is prime member right so what is the value of is prime member the value of is prime member is equals to true so this is technically going to be true this statement so we'll say console.log enjoy the content else console.log please buy the subscription to enjoy the content right although the, of course the logic of prime video is not this simple but we know the use case that they are also using if condition but they must be using a lot of logic to show what to sh like what to show when the user is prime what is the what to show whether the user is not prime member and how to calculate whether the user is a prime member they must have put a lot of logic there but we can mimic something like this right so if you execute this piece of code you can see welcome to prime video enjoy the content what happened now this condition we instead of condition i just put a variable so it will try to evaluate the variable what is the value of the variable the value of the variable is true if the value of the variable is true it is going to execute the if condition that means it will execute the if block and the complete else block will be avoided you can see if the if the condition is true if block is executed else block is completely avoided right let me even write it here if the condition is true only if block is executed and else block is completely avoided completely avoided if condition is false if condition is false if block is completely avoided and only else block executes right so if the condition is false let's see so let's try to make this condition false that now let's say the user is not a prime number not a prime member so is a prime member becomes false that means this if check is going to completely get avoided and we will only execute else if you run it see welcome to prime video please buy the subscription to enjoy the content because this time the condition was false this is the essence of if else and one very important piece of note that i would like to draw if block can exist without else block but else block will not exist without if block right so you can see in the first example right in the if demo file if was existing and we didn't have we didn't get any like else block but in the if else else exist because there is an if if you will just remove the if block let's say i remove this if, if block see it will start throwing error declaration or statement expected because you can't have just an else block you can't have something like this else only exist with if but if can exist without else this is the main essence of if else statements so there can be a valid argument that why we are not actually comparing is prime member double equals to true like whether this value is true or not like why just writing is prime member is good enough for us because the last thing that javascript has to do for a if else statement is whatever is the condition it will evaluate the condition after evaluation it will try to convert that thing into boolean for example here 12 i am not comparing 12 with anything so 12 is the final value it will try to 
converted to a boolean is prime member so what is the value of his prime member false it is already a boolean so it tries to get the value if the value is not already boolean it internally tries to convert it to boolean right this is how things work in javascript now let's talk about an application like hotstar now hotstar is a bit different than amazon prime video right in hotstar you can be a user who don't have a subscription or maybe you have the vip subscription that is the cheaper version or maybe you have the premium subscription right maybe so what can happen is there can be something like this so whenever i'll draw this diamond so technically i'm trying to make some condition so is premium member so the user is a premium member there can be a yes or no to this so let's say the user is a premium member or maybe no the user is not a premium member if the user is not a premium member then hotstar then in hotstar the user can be a vip member that is the cheaper version of it if you are not a premium member then is the user a is vip member this can also lead to a yes or maybe a no right so if the user is not a premium member not a vip member then the user is a free user so we can say premium user vip user free user so you can see you can have multiple conditions based on which you want to do one thing like if the user is a premium member then you want to show some specific content to the user or if the user is a vip member then you want to show something else to the user or if the user is a free user then you want to show something else to the user for this kind of a situation we got something like this you can write if then you can write your condition number one condition one if the condition one holds true if the condition one holds true then everything inside this if block will be executed if the condition one is not true and you want to put some more other condition based on which you want to do something else you can write else if condition two so there can be an else if block that you might execute and you can have multiple else if like this you can have multiple else if like this and at last you can have let's say else So let's try to see these conditions in action. Let's try to see these conditions in action, right? So we can say if else if else demo dot js. So we can do something like let is user premium equals to false. Let is user VIP is equals to true so we can say if is user premium then console.log enjoy the premium content on hotstar else if so you can write it in both the ways like you can write else if in new line also and you can write just after the curly brace after putting a space also you can write but for the timing i'm writing an in new line so you say else if is user vip console.log enjoy the vip content on hotstar for more subscribe to premium okay for more subscribe to premium at last we can put else at last we can put else we can say console.log please purchase either vip or premium subscription to enjoy content on hotstar okay cool so let's see let's see let's save the file let's try to run it 
सो इट सेज एंजॉय द वी आई पी कॉन्टेंट ऑन हॉट स्टार फॉर मोर सब्सक्राइब टू प्रीमियम ओके लेट से इफ आई मेक बोथ द कंडीशन फॉल दैट द यूजर इज नीदर अ प्रीमियम यूजर नॉर अ वी आई पी यूजर एंड इफ आई रन इट सॉरी माई वर्ड लेट्स रन इट प्लीज परचेज इधर वी आई पी और प्रीमियम सब्सक्रिप्शन टू एंजॉय कॉन्टेंट ऑन हॉट स्टार सो वॉट इज हैपनिंग and let's try to make the user a premium user this time so i made that condition true so if you run it enjoy the premium content on hotstar right so what is happening if the first condition that is mentioned inside if if the first condition if this condition if this particular condition inside if becomes true then you only execute the if block all of the other else if else blocks are avoided see like you can write a console.log end here after else i am writing console.log end so you can see end is still getting printed but neither else if block nor else block is getting executed because the if block is true now if the if block is not true and let's say the condition inside the else if block is true condition inside the else if block is true and you run it now you see only the else if block is getting executed neither the if block nor the else block is getting executed right and if both of the conditions are false then neither if nor else if block is getting going to get executed only the else block and whatever is like after these is false blocks that will get executed so you can see why end gets printed every time because it is outside this chaining of else if else if else it is outside this chaining so we can say the same thing that if condition 1 is true only this part is executed if condition if condition 2 is true only this part is executed if everything above is false only this part is executed right only this part is executed and the best part about else if is you can have multiple else if like if you want to have multiple condition condition 1 condition 2 condition 3 so you can chain multiple else if like you can write if condition 1 then some piece of code then you can write else if condition 2 and then write some more piece of code then you write else if condition 3 then write some more piece of code so on and so forth you can write more conditions at last you can have a else and this right now there can be a case that more than one condition is true for example in our case although this won't happen that a user is premium also or vip also but let's say more than one condition is true if let's say condition 1 is false but condition 2 is true and condition 3 is true so whatever is the first condition which will be cons which will be true only that block will be executed if condition 2 is true and it is present first this else if block is present first only this else if block is going to be executed so let me write about it here if multiple conditions are true then the block where first first true condition is written will be executed right will be executed and one more fact if can exist without else if and else but else if cannot exist with if else if can exist without else right so let me write about it 
if can exist without else if and else else cannot exist without if but can exist without else if this is point number 1 this is point number 2 without else if right third else if cannot exist without if but can exist without else right so you have to make sure that if is the root cause for everything so if if is not there then neither else if nor else can survive but else if and else are don't having any dependencies on each other so this is how if else if else if else if and else work so you can have multiple else if chained like this and things will start working now there is one more use case what is the use case now if you open like prime video nowadays in prime video even if you are a prime subscription if you even if you are having a prime subscription right then also it shows you option of new prime channels if you are able to see it gives you options of prime video channels right prime video channels right what is prime video channels they expect like for example lions gate play or discovery plus these are few more subscription that exist inside prime video so if you have prime video as well as if you have as a subscription of discovery plus then only you will be able to see the discovery content if you don't have discovery plus subscription you just have the prime subscription then you can see the prime content but you cannot see the discovery content right so this kind of a condition also exist so what if you have a multiple multi conditional thing right multi conditional thing exist so for that there are two solutions there are two solutions you can say something like if is user prime and is user discovery then you show them both content otherwise let's say the user is not having the discovery content but the user is having a prime content then you can write else if is user prime then only prime content and if they don't have any subscription else buy something buy something right so my point being my point being that here you can see if the user is a prime video member then only you are going to check whether the user is a discovery member or not so you can put more complex logic here right you can put more complex logic here because if this value is true and and this value is also true this whole expression will evaluate to what true and then you will be able to show the user both the contents but let's say this value is false this value is true then this expression will evaluate to false so this condition is false you will come to else if you will again check whether the user is a prime member true and then you only show the prime content so this can be one way to execute the things or there is another solution that is called as nested if else so what you can do something like this if is user prime okay if the user is prime then you open the block else buy something now you want to put the condition of discovery right that if they have discovery then show both content else don't show them so inside this block of if you can write another if condition if is user discovery else so if the user is having discovery subscription show both else only prime so see inside this if block inside this if block i have another if else inside this if block i have another if else so i could have done it using if else if else also and a similar thing i can do with this also so 
in programming there can be use cases that for one thing there are multiple solutions available right and this is not the only situation where you are going to use nested if else there can be more complex situation i'm just demonstrating one such situation that let's say if the user is prime then only this block will be executed right else block will be completely avoided then you check if the user is discovery then you show both the content else you only show the prime content let me talk about this nested if else dot js so we say let is user prime equals to true let is user discovery equals to true right we say if is user prime and then we say if is user discovery console.log enjoy both prime and discovery content else this else is you can see right this particular else on line number eight is mapped to the if of is user discovery right you say console.log enjoy prime content and this else on line number 12 this else on line number 12 is mapped to the if of line number 4 console.log please buy a subscription to enjoy enjoy content if you run it you can see both prime and discovery content is available if let's say the user is not having the discovery content subscription you can only enjoy prime content if let's say you don't even have a prime content please buy a subscription and doesn't matter if you have a discovery subscription but you don't have a prime subscription then you won't be able to see the discovery content right because the base condition to enter inside prime video app is that you should have a prime subscription so see still it will ask you to buy some content because discovery discovery plus is a separate app also right so you might be having a subscription there so either you relate you connect both the accounts or you buy a subscription again so if you don't have a prime account it will still ask you to buy a subscription so this is the essence of nested if else that inside the if block you can have another if else inside that if else you can have another if else so you can have nested if else inside nested if else inside nested if else and you can make it as complicated uh, complicated as possible for example let me introduce one more is a corn is user a corn like there is a channel a corn like there is a subscription of a corn also right false so you say else if like instead of discovery the user bot is user a corn right so you can say console.log enjoy both prime and accord right something like this but let's say you have discovery also prime also and accord also all three you have let's say you have all three so inside this is user discovery i can do if is user accord else enjoy all a corn prime and discovery content right so if you have all the three subscriptions it is going to show you enjoy all a corn prime and discovery content if you don't have a corn and you have prime and discovery then it will show you enjoy both prime and discovery if you have a corn but you don't have discovery see if you have a corn so what will happen if user is prime yes so fifth condition is true you go to line number six is user is having a discovery content no so you go to line number 12 is user is having a corn content yes so what you will show if you run it you will show enjoy both prime and a corn so this is how nested if else works so you can have any complex condition segregated out in the form of if else else if and nested if else Okay, so let's start, try to do some problem solving on if else. Right, let's start with the first problem. To be very honest, very basic problem we are going to start with. Okay, so given a number x, given a number x, 
check if the number check if the number is even or odd right for example let's say you take the value of x to be 27 now 27 is an odd value right it is an odd value so what we can say is the output is going to be the output you have to print is odd output you have to print is odd let's take one more example let's say x is equals to 54 x is equals to 54 so the output that you have to print is going to be even so this is the problem in front of you you have been given number x and you have to check if the number is even or odd what i would request all of you guys here is try to pause here for a bit think about the solution the program is going to be extremely simple you have you know every prerequisite in order to solve this question so try to think about what this problem is expecting you to do and then maybe we can start the discussion so how to solve this question how can we solve this question now we have to check whether a number is even or odd what type of numbers what type of numbers are even what type of numbers are even can i say that a number which is completely divisible by 2 is an even number a number which is not divisible not completely divisible by 2 are odd numbers right for example let's say if we have a number 7 if i try to divide 7 with 2 this is 2 3 is a 6 and we get a remainder 1 so because we got a remainder 1 7 is not divisible 7 is not divisible by 2 right that's why you got a remainder 1 whereas if you take something like 16 so you can say 2 8 is a 16 and the remainder is 0 when the remainder is 0 that means you know that 16 was completely divisible 16 was completely divisible so this can be a good criteria to judge right if we have been given a number, if let's say we have been given a number, how about we check that whether the number is completely divisible by 2 or not? If the number is completely divisible by 2, that means that number is an even number. Otherwise, the number is an odd number. So, we kind of like have a situation, right? We kind of like have a situation that is number divisible by 2 so we have two situations either the number will be divisible so either we say a yes or we say a no if the number is divisible we can say the number is a even number if it is not divisible we can say the number is a odd number can i say that i hope all of you guys are able to follow this that if somehow we are able to check the divisibility by 2 then we can check whether the number is odd or even okay now the next big question that arises is how to check if a number is divisible by 2 so i just showed you right if you try to divide the number with 2 and you get a non zero remainder see this is a non zero remainder if you get a non zero remainder that means it is a odd number and if you get a zero remainder that means you get even number now it's very easy to check the remainders right to calculate remainders to calculate remainders we can use this modulo operation this operator we discussed right this remainder operator we also call this operator as modulo like there is one more name there is one more name also called as modulo 
okay this is also called as modulo so we have this modulo operator right using this modulo operator we can figure out the remainder of any number so let's say if i try to do something like 7 modulo 2 this is going to give me a value 1 whereas if i do 34 modulo 2 it is going to give me a value 0 what is this modulo this is the remainder operator it helps us to calculate the remainder of the division so what i can do is i can check if the number x modulo 2 now we have to check equality right that whether the remainder is equals to 0 or not how can i check equals to 0 or not we have the equality operator if x mod 2 is double equals to 0 we will say console.log even we have to just print a text else we can say console.log odd we can say console.log odd right and that's it and that's it this is the program that we can do so what it is doing it is checking the condition this is the condition this is the condition that whether the number x is divisible by 2 or not if the number is divisible by 2 we print even otherwise we print odd and that's it and that's it so let's try to code this question let's try to code this question and see what can be done we will say let x is equals to some number let's say 34 right and i'll put a comment we have to check whether we have to check whether x is divisible by 2 or not how can we check we will say if x modulo 2 is equals to 0 if the value of x modulo 2 is equals to 0 then we say console.log even else we will say console.log odd we will make sure that the file is saved and now let's try to run the file if you run the file you can see we are getting even let's change the number to let's say 101 let's change the number to let's say 101 if you run it now you are getting odd so this simple program can help you to check whether the number is even or odd given or let's say consider three numbers or three integer values consider three integer values and find out the minimum value among the three among the given input given input values okay so what you have to do in this question what you have to do in this question you have to consider three integers right you have to consider three integers and you have to figure out the minimum among the three integers for example let's say we have an integer x is equals to 10 y is equals to 20 z is equals to 6 so here the output should be 6 because if you see among 10 20 and 6 6 is the minimum value right so you have to technically find out the smallest number x is equals to 10 y is equals to 3 z is equals to 100 this time you have to output 3 because 3 is the minimum among all of the 3 now the constraint here is you only have to do this using if else don't use any internal function you don't have to use any internal function like you know right that we have console.log that is an internal function so we have more internal functions so we don't have to use any internal function all we have all we can use is just basic if else if and else and then we have to figure out what is going to be the minimum value among all of the three now how can we solve this question let's try to think about it i hope everyone paused a bit and thought about the solution for this given question to be very honest this question is very simple all we have to do is just move step by step okay so we have three numbers we have three numbers okay let's say you have x y z somehow somehow 
we have to compare all of the three numbers within themselves we have to compare all of these three numbers within themselves to figure out like just think about it by just comparing x and y you cannot figure out the smallest among the three because maybe z is the smallest and you didn't consider z in the comparison what i'm trying to say is if i have to calculate the smallest among the three numbers i need to consider all the three numbers it cannot be a case that i only compare x and y and figure out the answer because maybe z is the smallest one and you don't even consider z so this is going to create a problem so let me write it somehow we have to consider all all three numbers in the comparison all the three numbers in the comparison now let's see how can we compare the three now just think about it let me ask you a few questions let me ask you a follow up question in which case in which case x will be the smallest in which case x will be the smallest let's try to figure out in what case x will be the smallest can i say that if x is less than y and x is less than z like x is lesser than y and x is lesser than z if these two condition hold up together if these two conditions are true together then x is the smallest then x is the smallest okay for example let's say x is equals to 2 y is equals to 5 z is equals to 9 now you can see is 2 less than 5 yes and is 2 less than 9 yes so technically if i say yes that means this is a true value this is a true value 2 and and true is what true so if x is less than y and x is less than z like x is lesser than both of the two values together then definitely x is the answer can i say that in no other case let me write it in no other case x will be the answer right we cannot figure out any other case in which x will be the answer right and this and and that i am writing this is the logical and this is the logical and okay so let me repeat you have three numbers x y z in what case x will be the answer if x is lesser than y as well as x is lesser than z if both of these conditions are true then the overall condition is true and hence x will be the smallest number now let me ask you a follow up question in what case y will be the smallest number in what case y will be the smallest number if y is less than x and and y is less than z if these two conditions hold true together that means if this condition is also true and this condition is also true only then we can say y is going to be the smallest one let's take an example x is equals to 10 y is equals to 3 z is equals to 15 now you can see 3 is less than 10 and 3 is less than 15 so this is also true this is also true true and true is overall true and hence y will be the smallest number can i say that right now a lot of people might ask that okay we already considered 
द कंपेरिजन ऑफ एक्स एंड वाई बिफोर डू वी मैनुअली नीड टू कंपेयर एक्स एंड वाई अगेन इज इट नेसेसरी येस बिकॉज मे बी मे बी लेट से एक्स वॉज लेस देन वाई बट एक्स वॉज नॉट लेस देन जेड सो मे बी दिस कंडीशन वॉज ट्रू बट दिस कंडीशन वॉज फॉल्स राइट सो एंड इफ एनी वन ऑफ द कंडीशन इज फॉल्स देन ऑल्सो द ओवरऑल आंसर विल बी फॉल्स बिकॉज वी हैव पुट अ लॉजिकल एंड राइट सो वी नीड टू कंपेयर दम अगेन we need to compare them again because we don't we are not sure like what was the answer of the previous condition it can be false and false it can be true and false it can be false and true so we don't know which case actually led the answer for not to be x right that's why we manually compare y now we know that in what case x will be the answer and now we know in what case y will be the answer can i say in no other case y will be answer so let me ask you a follow up question let me ask you a follow up question in what case z will be the smallest now a lot of people might think a lot of people might think that okay can i not use the same condition that z is less than x and and z is less than y definitely we can use the same condition again we can use the same condition again definitely but there is a simpler way to do it right if x is not the answer and y is also not the answer that means z is the answer that means z is the answer can i say that that means if this condition is also false if this condition is also false then we can say z will be the final answer so can i say can i say that let's put a condition here that is x less than y and and x is less than z there will be two cases either yes or a no right if we say x is less than y and and x is less than z then x is the smallest right okay but let's say this condition is false we say no that this condition doesn't hold true so we will do one more comparison because now x is definitely not the answer now x is definitely not the answer let's see if y is the answer y is less than x and then y is less than z this can again lead to a yes that y is the smallest or we can again say no that definitely this condition is also false so now this was false that's why you landed up here and if this is false you landed up here then we can directly say z is the smallest because now x is not the smallest y is not the smallest now we have a structure of the program just a note just a note that i want to put the same program can be solved it in other ways also like maybe you have some other ways in which you can solve the problem and uh, that's the nature of programming that's the nature of programming that is one question can be solved with multiple ways you just have to make sure that your approach is also correct because this approach is definitely 100% correct and how we will be coding it we will say if x is less than y and x is less than z then console.log x then we can say else if because see now from one condition you want to hop on to other condition y is less than x and and y is less than z so i'll say console dot log y and now if x is not the smallest answer y is not the smallest answer then i can just put a else and i can say console dot log z because now definitely z is the answer and that's it this is how we are going to code this question so let me just quickly hop on to vs code and actually write it so that you can actually see this in action so let's start coding the solution so we can say let x is equals to let's say 10 and you can initialize multiple values in the same line this is how you can do it right if you want to initialize multiple values in the same line all you have to do is Put variable equals to the value, then a comma, then see a comma here, 
and then again a variable with a value then a comma again and then again with a variable with a value if you don't want to go into that complexity you can just initialize them in separate lines in the initial days there is no harm in doing this as well right so anything can work i just showed you i'm just commenting it so that you, it, you have it for your reference and now i will say if x is less than y and x is less than z we can say console.log x then we can say else if y is less than x and and y is less than z we can say console.log y else console.log z let's try to print it and see you are getting that value as 9 because z was the smallest now let's make it 99 now x is the smallest let's run it and now you can see it is giving you 10 as i said you can write some other if else conditions and still you might get the same answer so one question can be solved in multiple ways you don't have to figure out that okay is this the only way to solve it no there can be multiple ways to solve the same question i hope you guys understood the overall coding implementation this is as same as the same thing that we wrote in the note now let's move on to the next question that can be a bit tricky but definitely very interesting we all know about triangles right we all know about triangles right but this time let's do something interesting what do you have to do given three numbers given three numbers a b c you have three variables in which you will be given three numbers or i should say integers properly three integers a b c check if we can form a triangle with the sides with the sides of the triangle having length a b and c okay so listen to me very carefully everyone knows about triangles everyone must have played some things and do did some maths with triangles right so we are trying to do something more interesting you will be given three integer values you will be given three integer values listen to me carefully you will be given three integer values you have to check you have to check something that can you do something or not what something you have to check if we can form a triangle like i want to form a new triangle okay i have to check if i can form a triangle with the sides of the triangle having length a b and c that is one side of the triangle should have a length a one side of the triangle should have a length b one side of the triangle should have a length c can we form such triangle can we form such triangle for example for example a is equals to 7 b is equals to 10 c is equals to 3 for this example the answer is going to be yes that is we can form a triangle I can form a triangle such that one length is 7, one length is 10, one length is 3. Whereas, if I take another example, if I take another example that let's say A is equals to 1, B is equals to 10, C is equals to 12, right? The answer is going to be no. You cannot form a triangle, you cannot form a triangle with the one side having a value 1, one side having a value 10, one side having a value 12. You cannot form this. You can even try to draw it on a pen and a paper. You won't be able to draw. You won't be able to draw properly. Okay. So for this test case, this kind of test case, answer will be yes. For this kind of test case, answer will be no. We have to figure out, we will be given these three values A, B and C and we have to figure out whether we can form a triangle or not. Now in this question, you have to think about multiple things that how 
to figure out a logic that given the lens can be form a triangle you have to figure out the logic here right and and we are not only talking about right angled right i am not only talking about right angle triangle right i am not talking about only right triangle angle right right like i am not only just talking about this kind of a triangle no i'm talking about every like any possible type of a triangle any possible type of a triangle like isosceles scalene equilateral right angle any triangle if you can form with the given sides you have to print a yes if it, you cannot then print a no this is the question and trust me it's a good question it is going to take at least 5 to 7 minutes for you guys to think about it right so pause a bit here try to think about the solution don't discuss a lot in the chat right and uh, see if you can solve it and then we are going to start discussing the solution so let's start the discussion guys so what the question is we have been given three sides okay we have been given three sides and we have to check whether it can form a triangle or not so we have three sides a b c can using the lens as these given three values can we form a triangle or not okay so there's a very basic condition if you want to form a triangle one second if let's say you want to form a triangle let's say the length of this side is c the length of this side is a and length of this side is b right you can have any lens like just think about it right if i just rotate it then the sides will change right so doesn't matter what sides you get but let's say we form a triangle with the three values then there is a necessary condition that should happen what is that that if you are giving this side as a then the sum of the other two sides should be greater than a and same thing for the rest of the sides the sum of the other two sides should be greater than b the sum of the other two sides should be greater than c these three conditions should hold true together that for every side say a then the sum of the two sides should be greater than a c sum of the two sides should be greater than c and same for b then the sum of the two sides should be greater than b right these three conditions should hold true together if any one of these condition doesn't hold true together then you are not going to get the correct answer right let me repeat myself let me repeat myself if if we want to create a triangle with a b c sides then for each side the sum of other two sides should be greater right this is a basic condition right this is this condition gets proved from geometry like i'm not going to go in the basics of geometry you can say that like it's like very elementary mathematics doesn't matter if you don't remember it don't worry i have already told you now you know the logic so what does it say if you want to assign a triangle these values a b c then for all the values one by one let's say first for a the sum of b plus c should be greater than a then for the next side b the sum of the other two side that is sum of c plus a should be greater than b and same thing for c the sum of a plus b should be greater than c that means if we want all of the three conditions true together and if you want to get all of the three conditions true together can i say if a plus b is greater than c and and b plus c is greater than a and and a plus c is greater than b we can say console dot log yes console dot log yes that yes we can form a triangle else console dot log no we cannot form a triangle right all of these three conditions should hold true together that is the major thing that is the major thing right so we can just write a simple code if you want this condition to be true 
and this condition to be true and this condition to be true then only you have to print a yes then we can put logical and in between why logical and because logical and will only give you a final value true if everything is true and we want all of these three conditions to be valid right so summarizing this if you want to assign a triangle three values abc then for every side one by one for every side the sum of the other two sides should be greater than the current side sum of the other two sides should be greater than the current side sum of the other two sides should be greater than the current side and that's how you can check whether you can form a triangle with the given three values or not so let's start with the implementation we can say let a is equals to 10 let b is equals to 12 let c is equals to uh, let's take some value let's say 5 we can say if a plus b is greater than c and a plus c is greater than b and b plus c is greater than a all of the three conditions are true console dot log is else console dot log no can i say that so just remove it from here okay so if you try to run it you are getting a yes you are getting a yes why what is 10 plus 12 it is 22 22 is greater than 5 what is 10 plus 5 it is 17 it is greater than 12 what is 12 plus 5 it is sorry 10 plus 5 is 15 which is greater than 12 and then 12 plus 5 is 17 which is greater than 10 hence we can form a triangle and that's how you are going to solve this question simple easy if else and the logic is done so let's have one more variation about triangles using basic if else given the sides or i would say side length of a triangle in the form of three integers right so you will be given three integers that are going to actually represent a triangle so it's a valid triangle that it they actually represent okay check if the given triangle is equilateral or scalene or isosceles right so you have to check whether the given triangle is a equilateral tri is an equilateral triangle or a scalene triangle or a isosceles triangle for example let's say you are given the sides as a is equals to uh let's just think about it. let's say 7 b is equals to 7 c is equals to 7 now because all of the three sides are same the answer here should be equilateral let's take one more example hey right, let's say one more example let's say a is equals to 8 b is equals to 9 c is equals to uh, let's say so uh, let's think about it. what case we can take let's take a 12 and let's take a 5 okay so let's quickly check if it is a valid triangle 20 good 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 okay so it's a valid triangle and this time this triangle is what isosceles this is a isosceles triangle okay whereas let's take one more example let's say a is equals to 8 b is equals to 14 c is equals to 8 so now if you will see the answer is going to be scaling this is a scaling triangle okay so always and always the given input will represent a valid triangle just take this as a note given input will always form a triangle right so you don't have to consider the case that the input is not a triangle the given input will always give you a triangle you have to figure out whether the triangle is an isosceles triangle equilateral triangle or a scalene triangle pause here a bit think about the solution it's a very easy question if i compare to the last one think about it 
and uh, then we are going to start the discussion on the solution of the problem so there is a small update guys in this question actually this should be scalene this should be the scalene triangle and this should be isosceles i by mistake wrote it differently right in scalene triangle all of the sides are different in isosceles isosceles triangle at least two sides are like exactly two sides are equal so technically it's a very simple problem to solve there is a very simple condition for an equilateral triangle if you talk about an equilateral triangle then all the sides are equal to each other if you talk about a scalene triangle none of the sides are equal to each other and if you talk about isosceles then any two sides are equal to each other but the third one is different the third one is different okay so let's see now if you want to check about the condition of equilateral i can say that if a is equal to b and b is equals to c and a is equals to c that means all of the three sides are equal to each other if all of the three sides are equal to each other can i say it's a equilateral triangle then we can have a condition that a is not equal to b and and b is not equal to c and and a is not equal to c that means none of the sides are equal to each other so we can say scalene we can put a if here we can put a else if here and now if this condition is not true this condition is not true that means whatever is the triangle it is definitely a isosceles triangle as simple as that <coughs> so either the triangle will be equilateral or scalene or isosceles so if the triangle is not equilateral if the triangle is not scalene then definitely it is isosceles as simple as that right so this kind of an implementation we can do and with simple if else and simple checks of if else we will be able to solve our code right this is one way to do it we can have one more way to solve the same question right we can have one more way to solve the same question that is if a is equals to b and b is equals to c and a is equals to c then it is equilateral as simple as that else if now this time let's see if we can have this condition of isosceles triangle we can say that now if all of the three are not equal to each other if all of the three are not equal to each other then maybe we can check that either a is equals to b or b is equals to c or a is equals to c now we know right that if the above condition is not true then definitely in the second condition we cannot have all the true values because definitely if the above condition is not true one of the condition was failing right one of the condition was at least failing so we can just put a or right why put a or now see if all three values are not equal to each other it is going to be equilateral but let's say a is equals to b but c is different then also it is isosceles or b is equals to c and a is different then also it is isosceles or a is equals to c and b is different then also it is isosceles that means if let's say we have any two values as false but one value also as true then also the condition will be true because it's a or and hence we can write this as isosceles and once the triangle is not equilateral and not isosceles then i can just say it is scalene so this can be one more way the second way to solve the same question we can solve the same question in two different ways by just changing the conditions right here i have put a condition of scalene here you can put a condition of isosceles technically <coughs> technically speaking you can have one more way where you first check for scalene then check for isosceles 
and if it is not scalene not isosceles then it is equilateral <coughs> right how can you check for equilateral check if all the conditions are true then it is equilateral that means all the condition of all the sides being equal how it is scalene if all the sides are unequal to each other like not equal to each other and this condition holds true for everyone like every side is different from the other side then it is scalene otherwise it is isosceles if it is not equilateral not scalene then it is isosceles or if you want to have another way to do the same question check if all the three sides are similar to uh, same as each other then it is equilateral now if all the sides are not same as each other we come to else if then we are definitely sure that at least one of the condition is going to be false that's why it became false right when it will become false then at least one of the condition is false so we can have a or here because if a is equals to b but c is different and let's say other two statements are false this was true then also it is isosceles let's say this is false but b was equals to c and a was different this is true and this is false then also it is isosceles same thing here if it, this is true and both of these are false then also it is isosceles so we can put a condition like this for isosceles right so this is how things will work if you want to detect whether the triangle is a scalene isosceles or a or an equilateral triangle i hope the coding implementation is going to be very simple I would recommend you guys to try to code this on your own because technically I have written the whole coding implementation in the notes here already.